to Let's Talk Racing. We're here live. Hey, Greg. Hang on a second. How do you know that's Greg? Got Al here. S sports. Virginia Sports Hall of Fame member. Woo -hoo! That's a pretty big deal, though. That's all. At the time, it was, yeah. Do, do you get to go do anything special? Yeah, you get a free dinner. Free dinner, that's about <laughs> it. But you're in there with some heavy hitters, too. Well, yeah, I mean... You know, so... We're going to get Greg on here. Are you going to interview him? Oh, see there? Uh, yeah, hold on, hold on. Before you start, I'll jump in. Hey, Greg. Hey, man. Hey there, how you doing? Greg Edwards, track champion, Langley Speedway, five-time right now, right? Four-time. Four-time. At least planning on 2015, okay? There you go. <laughs> That'll work. You, you, um, you going to go for it again this year? Yeah, I mean, it appears that's what we're going to do. Uh, as, you know, as far as I know, all the, all the sponsors are coming back with us. Um, James Long is ready to go for another season. So uh, as far as I can tell, uh, as long as everything's good, we'll be running for another one. That's good. Do you find it, it I, I hate to say this because I'm, I'm right there with you in the age, but is, is it getting harder and harder to do, or is it actually getting a little bit easier? Well, I don't know. I mean, as far as I mean, I feel like I got it. I could almost, I've been around that track quite a bit, so I don't know. I mean, I feel like I'm still fine. I feel like I'm still coming into my own, to be honest with you. I mean, um, sometimes you really, as much as you want to work on the cars all the time before and be in the shop every night, you know, those priorities change a little bit, but as long as we have people and we can work it out, and uh, they understand that, and it, it's great. So, uh, like I said, that's the biggest thing that I've found. I still love going to the racetrack. I love racing. And, uh, you know, like some of the guys, some of the younger guys, they, they might put the hours in we used to. But we've got a good deal worked out on how we're, how we're doing it. We have some guys come in. They work night shifts, so they'll come in in the mornings, and we got another crew that comes in at night. So we get quite a bit done with uh, Adam having to be there all night long. Yeah. Um. Go ahead, Al. Yes, Greg, Greg Al Pierce, how are you? Hey, how are you? All right, listen, Greg, um, I went to the Daily Press when you and your brother started what seemed like 25 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Is that about right? Was it been about 25 years or 20 years? Certainly 20. Oh, probably more than that. It's got okay. to be probably 28. I mean, okay. I, got, I started racing out there as far as like in Grand Stocks in 87 or 88. Okay. okay. Yeah, get, getting close to 30 then. Let me ask you this. Long time. Yeah, and, I, and I've asked this to a lot of great race car drivers. Does winning ever get ordinary? Does it ever get, does it ever get not boring but expected? And do you, I mean, what does it take to keep you at the top of your game week in and week out? No, I don't think it ever does. I mean, sometimes you do get expected. The crew gets expected when we're running well, you know, to, you know, at least run good or, or compete for the win. And that's the hardest thing when you do have a bad season. When you're used to it, it kills you because it's like, I, I know I can still do this, and what's going on? Why, why are we not performing? And sometimes it just takes a little thing. It's just chemistry in the team. Sometimes it's just you get off on the year or the, the combination you're working on is not good. But, you know, it never gets old. It, uh... It's like a drug. It, it really, you, you, you get to where you expect it and you want it. And the, the more you win, the more you want to win. I mean, success breeds success, you know, if you ask me. And that's why I think you see some of the greater race car drivers and these guys who just keep winning because they don't want not to win. That's the, the worst thing. Once you get to the level, your biggest fear is failure. Have you ever had a year or, or a, a half a year where you said, you know, I'm just not as good as I used to be? And I don't know why it is, but I'm, I may be over the hill. Have you ever self-doubted at all? Not yet. I mean, I've had times where I've known that I felt like the car just wasn't performing or maybe our motors weren't up to par at, at that time or something. And I always wanted confirmation. I was like, you know, well, somebody jump in the car and drive this thing too, just to make sure I'm not crazy. And um, we usually could get that, but... Uh, no, luckily enough, you know, as soon as you start doubting yourself, I think it's probably when you start thinking about hanging it up, you know, as race car drivers, kind of kind of 
kind of carry a little bit of a big ego and feel like you're better than everybody else. She's going to uh, compete against them. Can, can you imagine even just a little bit what Jimmy Johnson felt like this year at the banquet? He finished 11th, which is his worst finish of his career. Some guys would kill to be 11th, and yet 11th was the worst he's ever been. Can you kind of put your play, yourself in in his place that night and what's going through his mind? I don't know. Because it's, like, it's never happened to you, has it? Well, yeah, yeah, we've had bad seasons before, but, yeah, he's still got a few wins. I mean, the way the chase format works now, that could happen easily. So, um... I still think he has faith that that team's fast and he's fast. I mean, he's already shown that. So, I don't think he's too concerned. I mean, look at what he's done. He's, uh, everybody was still taking him at the beginning of the season to say he was going to win the championship. And he, <laughs> he still performed well. He still won races. I mean, it's just, he just didn't perform what he needed to. So, uh, I don't think that's anything that for him to be, him to be worried about. He said, he's got a pretty impressive resume. Probably the best of anybody that's ever come through racing as far as I'm concerned. I think he would use it as motivation for for this coming year. Yeah, I'd be scared to be racing against him next year. Honestly. Yeah, I think he's. I think he's gonna be pretty pretty awesome if he's got that kind of drive. And I mean, just for him to keep up the way he did and won like five in a row, that's unheard of. That's been crazy in that that sport. Yeah, but the thing about it is, though, for both of you guys, you hear drivers and crew chiefs and owners saying, "We've worked as hard as we've ever worked." We've got the best people we can possibly get. They they constantly remind themselves how good they are, and then yet when they finish eleventh in points, it, isn't it isn't it automatic or natural to have a little bit of second guessing, a little bit of self doubt, or, or do you figure you know you can't be top five or six in points every year? Well, I think a lot of it comes down to too is, is luck. I mean, not only did they have, you know, very good luck the years that they won, but then, you know, every now and then luck's going to catch up with you, and it's not going to work your way. So yep. I think that's probably yeah, yeah. Okay. happened. I mean, they, they can go back and look at races and say, this happened here, this happened here, this happened here. And I doubt you're going to see him with the majority of it on Jimmy. I think it's going to be on other things. But I'm sure he made his mistakes. I'm sure the crew made some mistakes. You know, flat tires, whatever. So... I, I I don't feel like, at least what I get it from him, that he's doubting himself one, one bit. I mean, I feel like even Jeff Gordon's not doubting himself. As long as he had a bad streak, as soon as he got back in some fast stuff, he ran great this year. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, they're both scared of you. What's that? They're both of those guys, Gordon and Johnson, they're terrified of you. Yeah, right. <laughs> have they, have they, listen, have they ever come to Langley? Have they ever raced against you? Of course yeah. not. They're scared of you. They're not going to... They're not going to come in here and let you whip well, their butt. No, wait a second. Jimmy, didn't you run against Jimmy Johnson? Didn't he run the ASA? He ran the ASA, but he left the year I started racing for... See? He's scared, he's scared of you. <laughs> he's scared of you. That's all i got to say. That's, that, that's got to be it. That, that's what I should put that on my resume. Absolutely. Jimmy Johnson ducked me for years. <laughs> there you go. By the way, I was down in Pocosa the other night for the first time in my life. I had, no, no, I had dinner at the at the surf rider. I had I had never been there before. Oh, that's a great place. And Sandy Lemons was in town from Florida. Yep. And my wife and I drove out to Pocosin. We got a pass at the front gate and went on in. And uh, we had dinner <laughs> at the surf rider with Sandy and, and uh, her daughter her daughter in law and some of her grandkids. So got a great crab cake sandwich and coleslaw and fries. It's uh, that's a pretty nice place down there. Yep, I mean, from that, if you were looking out the window out of the water, you could see my dad's house. I mean, it's, he's oh, is that right? Okay, yeah. okay. So you can swim to his house from there, so he yeah. lives right. Before you go to the surf rider, he lives down on the right, right before you get there. Now, didn't you all have a restaurant down there? Didn't they, Didn't your family have a restaurant in Pocosin for a while, or do you still? We we own a building now that they still do it. It's Bull Island Eats and Treats, and they, they run down there. And, uh, and so that's a nice little place to go eat also. Okay, I'll, I'll do that next time then. Okay. There you go. Yep. But, uh, yeah, so they really fixed that marina up there, man. Some friends of mine, the Browns, they, they bought that marina and they really did spend a lot of money fixing that place up. Yeah, it's it's well lit up. The Christmas decorations look nice. Uh, the boats are out of the water, which is good. And, and it's, uh, we, had a, we had a very nice time. We had a very pleasant experience down there. 
And uh, earlier that same week, I had lunch with Chuck Hall. Uh, yeah, I had lunch with Chuck Hall at the Ricosin Diner. There you go. Which used to be called, used to have a different name, I think. Oh, Fatties or, or, I don't know. Chuck, Hall, Chuck called it something else, but anyway. There you go. So I've had, I've had two good experiences at Pocosin last, uh, last week. There's, there's a lot of good food in Ricosin. Great seafood down there. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah it's a good, it, it is really a great place to visit. And it, it is a very nice town. Very nice little community, I should call Roy, it. Let me ask you one more question, not about Pocosin, not about food. <laughs> All right. But it's, it really kind of applies to both you and your brother. At, at some point in your career early on, when you were early 20s or, you know, just you had just become pretty good at what you did, did you allow yourself to look ahead and think, you know what, if we win two or three Langley championships, we might get somebody who will give us a truck ride or two, or we might get a, a, a Bush Series or, or Nationwide ride, and you know what, by late twenties, we can be in cup. Did that ever cross y'all's mind? Yeah, it did, and I thought we had a plan for that. And unfortunately, it was kind of—I like, felt like I was in a situation where I was following in Davy's footsteps. You know, and he, we started talking to different people, and um, I remember it started off. I think we were talking to Sam Mark when he had his team actually, and Danny was looking at that. And the money—it just seemed like so much. I think he wanted three hundred thousand dollars for the year. Mm -hmm. you know, now it's just a, that's a joke for how much they're spending now. And, but, uh, you know, that didn't work out. And Danny got a deal with Ed Whitaker and run a few races. And he was doing all right, but I just felt like, you know, I, I didn't ever have anybody that could, that I knew that could help me up with enough finances to move me to that next level. You know, and that's, uh, you always say, you know, I'm going to sit around here and then first, you know, said, well, a couple of Langley championships, but everybody's telling you, well, you need to move away from Langley. Get something else going. So we tried that, tried the traveling thing. So I don't know. I don't know what the answer is to that. And I wish I knew a, you know, the magic to what it takes. I think there's a lot of great race car drivers that are that are still doing the same thing. You know, they're trying to figure out what how to what path to go to do to take you there. Yeah, and and, so. and and as you well know, Greg, a lot of guys get a break, and they're at the right place at the right time. The right person sees them. Uh, I, I don't think I don't think for a second that Denny Hamlin was a better short track racer than you or your brother, or better than Elton Sawyer, or better than Phil Warren, or better than twenty people I can name. But Denny Hamlin happened to be at the right place at the right time, and he happened to be seen by people who needed a driver, and that's why he got where he got. I don't think he knocked anybody dead. At South Boston or Orange County or Kenley or Southside or anywhere else, any more so than those other guys I mentioned, including you and your brother and Phil Warren and and you know Elton Sawyer and those guys, a lot of it just came down to sheer blind luck. Yep, I mean, and he had like several things really go his way. It's like him when he was running his own team, they were running okay, but they weren't dominant at all. They were just winning a couple of races here or there, maybe even not a race. You've got to agree with me that there were probably, in the state of Virginia at that time, there were probably 10 to 12 to 15 guys equally as good if given the same opportunity. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. 
Th I, there's 30 of them there. That, that well, I'm just, I was yeah. just being generous and thinking maybe yeah. maybe two dozen guys or, or, or a dozen and a half could have could have been the guy that Curtis Markham said, hey, shake these cars down, let's see how good they are. Uh, so, that, so that everybody's equal. I feel like, I mean, we, we knew Curtis good enough, but I feel like if I was in that car, just what happened to Jim and hired me, I could have done the exact same thing. Yeah. I feel like that he would have been on board. I mean, Curtis has known us for a long time. Yeah. It's just how things work out. I mean, Curtis was helping out another late model driver, and, and it worked out great. It worked out for Danny's career, and worked out for, you know, Gibbs has made a good selection. But I think, like you said, there's probably 20 drivers that could have came into that car. And then right, the same thing. Sometimes you, know, you think this job is going to be great, and you get him in the cup level, and I don't know why they just, you know, put a lot of pressure on that level, and you got to be able to take the pressure. But I can I can assure our listeners of one thing: if you had gotten that ride, and you were now in Denny Hamlin's position and had been for the last five or six years, you would not be nearly the jerk that he is, because <laughs> you're. <laughs> I think. I think your personality and, and your willingness to be nice to people probably exceeds by a factor of ten anything anything Denny puts out there on the table. I, I remember him as a as a mini stock driver at Langley, and I told somebody at a cup race four or five years ago he was a he was an arrogant little snotty jerk then, and he's an arrogant big snotty jerk now. So I, I'd like to think that you would not have become what you weren't already, um, you've always been gracious and polite and easy to work with and deal with and, and uh, I don't I don't think fame would have turned your head like it obviously turned his. Well, I'd like to think not, but I sure would like to try to think <laughs> to see if it would. But. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to make a full surprise winning speech one night <laughs> thanking, thanking the Academy, but I don't think that's going to happen either. So. <laughs> that's right. That's anyway. Good. We can only dream. Yeah, yeah. Well, it might as well. well yeah, no, Greg, you're still young enough. You could still make it into to the trucks, or you know, you you could still get there, couldn't you? I, I don't think so. I don't think there's anybody really hiring for that. I mean, yeah, if I could find somebody that just want to give me enough money to run a truck, but I don't see where you don't see anybody my age really moving up through there unless they're doing it just for fun and they've got a ton of money. Then I'm comfortable where I'm at. I like to. Yeah, you know, I'm not spending any amount of money at all, and we're competing at a top level. No matter where we go with our weight models, we're, we're either winning or got a chance to win all the big races and, and local. So, you know, you kind of feel like I'm a, a big fish in a small pond right now, and at, at the age, I enjoy it, and I enjoy the weight model stock car. I mean, we talked to a lot of people, including Denny and, and Kyle Bush and even people like Dale Jr., and, and they're all saying when they retire, they only go back to race from weight models. Cause yeah. This is where they have fun. This is what they like. And, and I feel like the late, the late model races are some of the best races you'll ever see in the United States. So that's just short track racing. If all these cup guys that have never been to a Saturday night short track have never been to one, to me, that's real racing. I love it. You know, it's what everybody grew up on. And I don't know. That's just something about, you know, all those cars take the green flag for a Saturday night show. That's pretty exciting for me. And I think that's why you see a lot of, I mean, even like Bobby Labonte is going back to dirt a little bit. You see, of course, Kenny Schrader and Kenny Wallace, Tony Stewart goes. They all love coming running these short track races. It's fun. It's yeah. fun. I mean, what they're doing now at the cup level, I don't know how they can say that's fun. To me, it looks like some of the one racing right now. Engineering is through the roof. The drivers probably hardly understand the cars. It's just, it's getting, it's getting crazy with the technology. And uh, I think it's a re relief for them to come back and run these cars. And they're still, they understand them. You know, and I don't know, it just seems like to me, I, I enjoy it. And, uh, you know, like that last race we had at Myrtle Beach a few weeks ago, it was three wide from first, second, third, all the way back to 36, all race long. It was like Talladega. But if you paid your money for that show, that, that was just exciting as it could be. Do you have a grandfather clock yet from Martinsville? No, and I've had two opportunities where I feel like we gave it up. One time, uh, I was leading with about 10 laps to go. We had a half a straightaway lead and a piece on the car where that NASCAR made us put back in that previously was legal, popped out of the car and fell down into it and killed our chances. And the other time, I really thought we had a great, and we had some great runs from top five and seventh, you know, fifth. And then this last time, uh, 
I think it was 2010, we were down there with the, one of the fastest cars all through practice. I mean, the, the best car I've ever been in. And uh, I had my, my son unexpectedly. Yeah. Month early. And uh, we had to leave the racetrack. And uh, actually, let Nick Smith come in and get in the car and test it that Saturday before qualifying. He got in. And he's ready to give up the ride he was in because it was the best car he'd ever sat in. And I just, I really felt like, you know, that place is weird. You could have gotten crashed. I feel like we had by far the best car in the racetrack. And, we would have had a really good shot of winning it, but, uh, you know, it was more important for me to see my, my child born. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I assume that would be, at this point in your career, that would be number one on your bucket list. To, right. to, to win a Martinsville clock. That that would be cool. The way they've got Martinsville right now, I, I'm not in a total agreement to how it goes down. It's just turned, it seems like it's turned into me to the biggest crash best. All they do is tear stuff up, like with the caution with 10 to go, and the way the double file is now, it's, it's, if you're leading with 10 to go, it's almost like you're destined to be destroyed, and it seems like it's happening every year, and it's just not about, you know, if you can just finish the thing, you'll get a top five, and then, I just see too many cars getting destroyed at that racetrack, so I haven't gone the last two years, and I remember I wouldn't take the car the way it is, but if somebody wants me to go, and it's their money, well, I love to do it. I want to win grandfather clock, but I'm sure it has to be like turned into a big demolition derby, a really expensive one. What's on your bucket list then? Besides Martinsville, let's 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 just kind of throw that one out the door. Does it want a national? I mean, yeah. I'm just whenever's my next race is on my bucket list. You know, Fitz Langley, like I said, that Motor Beach race we just ran, we finished second and led the most laps. I'd like to have gone back and you know go back next year. I think we got to set up and. You know, we've won it before, but I'd like to get win that again. I'd like to, uh, you know, I'd like to win that Denny Hamlin race. You know, it's South Boston. That'll be a pretty neat race to win. We sat on the pole down there and ran second in it at Richmond. But I'd like to win that at South Boston. I think that'd be neat. So, you know, and then winning five championships. That's pretty cool. I'd like to get my list up there. You know, when you start getting close to Phil Warren and Danny Edwards, that's a pretty elusive list there. Not many people have done that at So, yeah, that's... That'll be pretty big for me too. Danny's got five, right? Yeah, Danny's got five, and Phil's got seven. So, when you start getting up there with those guys, that's that's pretty impressive if you ask me. And there's, you know, you're not going to see many people again that have never done that at Langley. So if you get on the list of the top two or three ever, that's a pretty big deal if you ask me. So yeah, I'd like to do that. Yeah. Well, how many wins you got at Langley, Greg? You know, I don't even know. I know it's over a hundred, but I, I do not know. Any number, and I wish I could find that out. I really, I don't know if Al, if you know anybody who can tell me exactly how many wins, but um, I sure would like to know that. I can go back and look at my files. I don't know that I've got, I'm not sure that I've got every season documented um, perfectly, but should be able to find out somewhere. That would be just, awesome. Just, like throw out a, just throw out a number. I, I'm convinced that Dick Trickle, bless his heart, did not win what they claims he did. Somebody just threw out a number one year, and it kind of grew from there. Yeah. So yeah. just just toss out a number that sounds remotely possible, and just say, "Well, prove I'm wrong." Just say, "Hey, I've been doing this for <laughs> thirty years. I've averaged nine wins a year or ten wins a year for thirty. Yeah, I got three hundred ten wins at Langley or three hundred eleven. Yeah, I'm pretty sure what that means. But <laughs> you know, I. I just throw it out there and make somebody prove you're wrong. Yeah, you know, 100, uh, I think 100 is not, as, I've been seeing 100 now for the last five years, so, but I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> well, hell, you're up to 1,000 now. <laughs> that's right. That's the, way, that's the way the trickle numbers were. Yeah, yeah, what did he say, 2,000? So. Uh, it was 1,200 the last I heard, he had, and obviously he, he's passed on now, so we're kind of making, having a good time at Dick's expense, but he probably would not have mind that. He, uh, I know when he, he came, joined right in. <laughs> I know when he came to NASCAR, the figure was something like 650, mm. and I don't know that he won more than four or five races total the rest of his life. But it's now like 1,200. So who knows? I don't think so. Do you have a? Do you got a national championship? No. Danny does. Danny's got a Mid Atlantic. Or Mid Atlantic. Okay. Yeah, they were kind of done different there, but no, never national. 
Well, there's another one for would, your would that be something you'd be in? You were going to try to chase it a little bit this year, weren't you? No, I had that's it just requires too much. I, I don't want to go out and run 50 races and you know, run you know, bring in starting park cars every week and all this stuff. It's just a I don't know. I, I didn't the way that deal worked. And I think NASCAR is going to change some stuff around on that too, but you know what? You were down there for that. Yeah. Well, how uncomfortable was it sitting there having that, um, uh, what's his name, kind of mock him? Um, well, it was Keith Rocco, and um, everybody knew Rocco would probably do that, because that's the type of guy Rocco is. I mean, he's, a, he's one of those northern modified racers, and he's a cool guy. I mean, I don't like him, but he, he tells it as it is. And uh, I don't think that was on his NASCAR approved script, so he's probably going to get a sign for it. But saying <laughs> <laughs> what everybody kind of was thinking, and... Uh, even Lee can't say this so much because Lee's brought in quite a few starting parks and anybody that's run for that national title has. So, you know, all this guy did was overdid it what it normally be done, and I think they did it to make NASCAR change the rules. So he got himself a national championship, and now maybe NASCAR will change how it does its national points. So, Yeah, that's always kind of a hard, you know, how, how do you get a national champion out of, what, you got to run 18 at Langley or... or how many ever, and you go back to the Midwest, Midwest, and they can run sixty in a year. You know how how can you make that fair? You know, I don't know. And like I said, looking back on it, between Virginia and North Carolina, if you count out the starting parks, Langley has the the, the biggest normal kind car count of any racetrack. And if you ask me, the most competition. So we just didn't bring any starting parks, which I guess maybe we should have. Some years I did, some years I didn't, and it depended on just our engine program and what if we had motors, you know, lined up and ready. But um, if we'd have brought as many starting parks as the other tracks did, you know, you know, we could have been right up there in the national points. But uh, you know, we didn't like to do that. Right. Well, but, but Greg, let me ask one final question now. If I if I happen to get caught speeding on With Creek Road, <laughs> or I get caught speeding going to the uh, surf rider, will either you or your brother's name help me any with the Pocosin police, or will it just get me in bigger trouble? Bigger trouble. Oh, most definitely. Oh, okay. I mean, say my name. <laughs> no, I don't, you know, I don't think it would help, because uh, if it did, it would have gotten me out of a couple speeding tickets, because uh, they're, pretty, they're pretty tight in Pocosin, especially down Marin Road and down to that Marina. They just recently made that 25 miles an hour. So the police sit down there and just pop people on. Well, I don't notice that. May, yeah, may, maybe Don Ward, maybe the old football coach. If I use his name, it might it might ring. I tell you, it'll help me out. Is uh, Josh Zeidenberg? If I throw out if I, th if I throw out the fact that I know Josh Zeidenberg and wrote about him for four years, hell, that might get me something. Hey, these guys, these cops now. I don't think most of them even live in the coast. They don't live <laughs> yeah, there's not a lot of crime in the coast, so I think the next best thing they got is people speeding for any reason. So they're they're pretty body fight on that. Yeah, <laughs> you, you should make them live in Pocosa. They couldn't. They should be allowed to drive in and, and arrest people. I, so. I think they do. Don't I think most of the cops there aren't they York Pocosa? Yeah, and most of them, I, a lot of them live in Gloucester. They, live, they don't live in the coast, and most of them. So. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So. All right. Well, we we've tied up enough of your Wednesday night. Uh, yeah, Wednesday night. Yeah. 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 We've tied up <laughs> enough of your Wednesday night. We're gonna let you go. And um, uh, great to talk to you again. I'm I'm always always delighted to come to Langley on those few weekends I'm in town and see you and your brother and. All the other late model guys that I that I wrote about for so many years. It's uh, it's always been fun. You've always been awfully easy to to work with, unlike some places I go. So <laughs> there you go. There you give, give, give my best brother into your into your your mom and dad, and um, okay. we will see you maybe at the surf rider one night. Okay, well I appreciate it, and I'm uh, trying to find Ashley. I'm walking around here lost in the woman section of the Target, so I better <laughs> walk around and try to find her. Okay. All right. A good one. Merry Christmas, Greg, and we'll be talking to you after the first. Okay. Merry Christmas to y'all. All right. Okay. Bye. I can't believe he was walking around that whole time. I thought he was home with his telephone, with the real phone. He told me they were all backed up on all their Christmas shopping. So. Okay. Mason Mingus was on the next line.
Huh? You, you didn't have him. I don't even know him. Mason, you there? Hello? Yes, sir. Oh, hey, there you are. Got Mangus, uh, Mason Mangus on the line. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I've been, uh, my name is Mason Mangus, obviously. I'm 20 years old. I've been racing in the Jake Miller Chuck Series all last season, and uh, previous to that, I ran the Arca Series um, for a couple of years, and uh, been running a bunch of super late model stuff before then, and um, just trying to figure out our uh, plans 100% for next year. What, um, uh, what truck team do you run for? I uh, started out the year running for Wing Chun Racing and uh, finished out the season at Billy Boat Motorsports. Billy Boat? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, where are you from? Where do you live? Where did you, you grow up? Give us some personal background. I was born in Louisville, Kentucky, but uh, very shortly after that I moved to uh, Brentwood, Tennessee, and I grew up all my life in Brentwood, Tennessee, and uh, just recently moved the past year and a half. About a year and a half ago, I moved to Cheryl Sport, North Carolina, um, which is just a couple minutes down the road from Morrisville, so um, obviously I can get around um, the shop and, and be involved with uh, everything going on up here. Well, this is a very important question here. Are you a, a Louisville fan or a Kentucky fan? <laughs> Definitely a Kentucky fan. There's, uh, there's not many Louisville fans but, uh, in my family. Oh, Lord. Well, <laughs> maybe you'll turn out okay after all. <laughs> now, anybody pulls to that professional team in Lexington, I don't think, I don't know. Anyway, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> you got to follow up with that somehow. Um... So now, are we going to do? We're going to do trucks this year again. Are you planning on being back with Billy Boat? Um, we haven't, we haven't uh, announced our official plans yet, but I think we got some. It's a pretty exciting stuff planned, and I think that uh, you know our schedule will be fairly similar to what we saw last year. But I think we're going to have uh, opportunity to run really well and some uh, some good people and good equipment around me, and hopefully, can be able to uh, put down a little bit better results this year and uh, contend in the round of top. Uh, in the truck, where you you went to some new tracks, I'm I'm going to take it this year. What was it like going to? Um, I don't know. Wh which ones did you? Uh, where did you go that was new to you this year? I should ask. Um, well, obviously Eldora, the road course, the two uh, two big ones. Um, but you know, some of the intermediate places were new. Um, I never raced in Charlotte, um, so a lot, a lot of those places. Never been to Texas. Uh, just go to Phoenix in a truck uh, two years ago. I had some track time there, but a lot of those race tracks I've never been to. Um, got to see a few of them, so Chicago, Kentucky, things like that when I ran the Arca Series. So um, I think about 50% of our schedule this year was actually brand new to me. We've never been to Gateway Motorsports Park, uh, so and uh, allowed me to be in New Hampshire. I've never been to a lot of the race tracks that we went to, so there's always a learning curve for me. Um, you know, there's always something brand new, but you know, it seems like that's how it's been pretty much for the past few years of my racing career. We've been moving up and maybe seen a lot of different race tracks, but it was definitely a great experience getting the Arca Series in before we moved to the Truck Series because we ran to some of the same racetracks, but definitely got to got to see those mile and a half and, and see some of the racetracks that um, I wouldn't have normally seen. I would have just made the jump right to the Truck Series. How, how'd you like going to Eldora? It was different. Uh, you know, that was, that was a very, very different. I really had no great experience at all. I ran, uh, I ran the two Arca races, Springfield and Coin, but that's uh, nothing. Nothing in comparison to how you drive Eldora. So um, that was that was pretty different. We actually we were pretty quick when when they went to track down. Um, you know, qualified they qualified track down. But as the track started drying up, we really didn't uh, know what to expect and, and didn't keep up with our changes um, on how the track changed. So that's something that we definitely learned, and, and we'll know going into next year. And I don't know. Um, you know, it was it was just a pretty big surprise of how much that racetrack changed um, as the day went on and when it dried up. It really took a lot of rubber. So. That was uh, that was a pretty different experience for me. <laughs> Did you enjoy it? Something you're you're looking forward to doing again? Yeah, you know I think it's cool. It gets um, you know it, it changes things up. It's it's mid season and you get in the routine, you get in the um, kind of in the stride, and you go to outdoor and it kind of throws everything out of whack. So um, it's something cool. It keeps you on your toes. Um, racing is great there. I mean, there's there's no better. Really, there's probably not much better of a show to go watch than Eldora because um, I don't think pretty much nobody knows what they're doing, so we're all just kind of hanging on. Mason, almost every driver has 
whether they publicly say it or keep it privately, almost every driver has a favorite place to go, a track he really likes, really looks forward to, and conversely, every driver has got a place he says, oh my God, I don't want to go there again. Gee, what are we doing? Well, what is your absolute favorite place to look forward to? And what is your absolute least favorite place that you dread going to on the, on the truck circuit? Um, my favorite place has to probably be Bristol, um, or, or I really like Loudon. Um, both of those little short tracks, but I really love going to those two racetracks. Um, you know, that kind of fits my, fits my background. I'm growing up short track racing. Um, Bristol, I love high bank racetracks. Very similar, or somewhat similar. It's comparable to Winchester Speedway in Winchester, Indiana. That's one of my all-time favorite racetracks. So I really get, I really love getting the chance to go there. I think that's probably the best racing that I've seen. Uh, short track racing like that, but um, you know there weren't, there weren't too many racetracks. We weren't really a racetrack to walk away from this year. I just said I really don't want to go back, but um, I know, and it's it's fun, but it's aggravating at the same time. Be the road courses, um, you know. I I look forward to them in a way, but in the other way, it's uh, it's pretty frustrating. The driver that has very very little road course experience, and uh, it's just a completely different feel. Um, I think it's it's more different than even going to Eldora, um, in my opinion, is uh, just so much, so much uh, that you have to learn, that you have to know, and experience pays ton at road courses, and uh, I think when we go there, it's always a, it's a frustrating, but it's, it's different, I like having it on the schedule, but, um, you know, I can take it or leave it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, now you mentioned, you mentioned Bristol and, and Winchester, would, would Salem also be in that same category? Absolutely. Um, Salem's not really in any category, though. It's, it's pretty much a, um, a whole a track of its own. But, yeah, I, I would, and you could compare for sure, especially three and four at least. Um, and Salem is my all-time favorite racetrack, so I love going there any time I get a chance to go there. Oh, okay. See, it's, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's Salem. You race uphill on one and two, and you race downhill on three and four. Yeah, it's, I mean, you really can't compare that racetrack to anywhere. Like this. Until this year, I don't know back, so they pay three and four, but yeah, you're right against the wall through three and four, and you're right against the bottom and one and two, and the track is so rough. I mean, there's concrete, I mean, asphalt chunks, people are going through radiators every time they go race there, so yeah. it's like you drive through potholes, um, but it's, it really puts it in the driver's hands. Uh, you really can't tune the car in to be perfect there because you're you're driving completely different lines and on um, completely different banking and, and radius corners on both ends of the racetrack. So it's uh it's really a driver's racetrack and uh and you know, it, it causes for really really cool really So cool so is Winchester. Winchester's really a doesn't matter how much you're handling, you, you gotta drive that track. Yes, I, yeah. absolutely that's just you you basically just hang on there. It's, uh, yeah. But it's a blast. Uh, we went and ran the Winchester Fortnite there this year, and then uh, two years ago I got to go, obviously, in the Arca Series and uh, had a lot of fun there. How did you do at the Snowball this year? <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, not so well. Um, we unloaded with our primary car, and we're really, really fast. Thought we thought we had a top five car, and uh, somebody had a piece of lead fall off our car right in front of me there in practice, and we got into it and got in the fence. And, uh, Pretty much destroyed that car, so we had to work all weekend on our back of the car, and it just it wasn't very good. But I thought we had a really good shot at that race this year, and uh, just you know, other people's other people's mistakes or or bad luck or whatever it may be, um, definitely caused there this week or this year. Um, uh, Doc sitting here behind the, the screen, shooting me this stuff on the screen. Um, did you go down to the U.S. Alabama this year? I did for the uh, the announcement of the Mobile 200. For promoting, what was that like being on the Alabama? Oh, it was it was cool. I got to go there um, and do the driver autograph session for the pre-race ceremony. Um, we went to the Arca race there, and uh, you know that was a lot of fun. That's a really cool place, and I think that's a great um, great attraction for, for that race um, and for all the people that live in Alabama, obviously. And, and it brings in a lot of tourists, so I think it gets the race a lot of good publicity too, because it doesn't just bring the race fans there; it brings the tourists that are at the at the ship it, it brings it to the racetrack. So I thought that, that was a really cool event that they put on down there. Um, having the press conference there, I think it um, I think it got a lot of attention. Cool, cool. Oops. Same on you. Ah, I forgot to. And it's the first time that's happened. They can call me later. 
Um, I, now I lost track. Do you see what he's running? Do you see his truck? Do you know who he is yeah. now? Okay. All right. Well, Major, you, were, you were about to ask him whether Rick Petito is as big a jerk as John Calipari. I, I don't even know those two names. <laughs> he does. Do you know who they are? <laughs> don't, don't, one of them's a Louisville coach, one of them's a Kentucky coach. One of them's a jerk and one of them's a semi-jerk. Semi-jerk? Yeah. Uh, we might have a difference of opinion on those two, though, I think. Nah, I just... Hey, listen, I'm a Duke fan, so don't get me riled up. <laughs> I'll never... Christian Leitner, when I go to bed every night, I thank God for Christian Leitner. That's probably before your time, that Kentucky-Duke game, that they still show replays of when Leitner gets a shot at the buzzer to get to the Final Four, so... That might have been 20 years ago. It might be before his time. I tell you. Hey, Mason, how was the pizza tonight? <laughs> uh, well, eventually it was pretty good, but I had to, I had to cook it a couple times. <laughs> uh, I was going to have to catch his tweet, and he was uh, making he, pizza. He, making pizza, but he forgot to put the pizza in. They had the timer set, though. And forgot to put the pizza in. Don't worry. That, that stuff happens all the time. Are you, are you a cook? Do you like cooking, or was this like a... Um, this is, this is definitely frozen pizza. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, Papa John's is the official sponsor of University of Louisville Sports. In fact, their stadium is called a Papa John's stadium, stadium, isn't it? Yes, sir. And see, he will not call Papa John and have pizza delivered because he hates what? Louisville and loves UK. I will wrap myself out and admit that I, I do really, really like Papa John's. I know that's, that's a, bad, a bad thing to say. Hopefully my, none of my family is listening. But. Okay. All right. Well. You're not going to be asking him about in and out burgers. I was like waiting that. for that. I knew that in and out burgers? burgers? Are they oh, up yeah. that way? Oh, no. But you get that. They're worth going to Phoenix for. If you gotta if you've gotta go to Phoenix for a race in or to cover a race, In and Out Burger, you gotta you gotta go to In and Out Burger. But see, when you're in the Chicago area, you gotta go to White Castles. That might be, but In and Out Burger is better. Oh uh, well, I don't know. You gotta have White Castles. In and Out Burger is the in the world. So. Well, Mason, you were out hey, there. If you go to Phoenix. Kansas City, you gotta go to Paul's Restaurant. Mason, you were at Phoenix, right? Yes, sir. Now, did did you get a chance to go to In and Out Burgers? Yes, sir. Every, every time we go up to Phoenix, see to everybody goes. Everybody there. goes there. Okay, everybody goes. Kansas City, it's Paul. Chicago, you got to go to White Castles. Yeah. Bar none. I took my daughter there for the first time this year. We brought back twenty White Castle burgers, yeah. and they didn't even last two days. Mason, there'll be no preseason testing for trucks this year. Well, for anybody, I guess. Well, that's um, crazy. Are you comfortable going into the season without any testing at all? Or is it kind of kind of scary? You know, I would I would definitely like to have some testing. I think everybody pretty much would. Um, it just it helps everybody get a jump start on the season. Um, big time of testing, you can take or leave. I mean, um, I really I'm really not too scared. I feel like we have a really good speedway equipment, and um, you know, speedways are speed races are speed races. If you have if you have a good body on your truck, you're just uh, you know, you're, you're doing pretty well, and you just kind of, it's up to everybody else to stay, basically. <laughs> if you can survive Daytona, you survive Daytona. Um, but I would really like to get some time on some other racetracks. I think you can learn a lot, especially going to some of the mile and a half. I wish they would have put at least a, a Charlotte test in or something close to home. Um, but, you know, everybody's on the same, on the same page, so you know, we're not behind the A-ball or anything, but I think everybody would have liked to see a little bit of testing. Well, don't don't be stunned beyond words. Don't be surprised if at some point NASCAR backs up a little bit and says, "Well, you know, we're we're going." I I don't know that that testing policy is locked in stone. It may change. You may get your wish, but for the time being, at least you're all even. Right. Right. You, you know what's it like? You know, you, you're talking about you, you're going to go down and run um, Daytona on this all year this year. What's it like when the Cup guys and even the nationwide? Well, it's Xfinity on, or what is it now? Sirius Xfinity Xfinity, Xfinity yeah. series come down and run with you. Um, what's that like? Do you like that? Do you like it when when Kyle Busch and Tony Stewart and all them jump in trucks and Kevin Harvick's another one that does it? Um, you know, I think there's 
you know, everybody has their opinion on it. Everybody has usually pretty strong opinions, but I think there's pros and cons to it. Um, you know, for for the truck series regulars, you know, it kind of it's um, I guess kind of a the downside because you're always chasing them. But at the same time, you know, we're all trying to make it to racing on Sunday, so I think you can learn a lot from them. And you know, if you can get by them in practice or, or even during the race, and, and you can learn so much from following somebody that has all that has all those laps of experience and has been there and, and has made it to racing on Sunday. So. You know, we're, we all have the same goal, and eventually we want to race against those guys anyway, so what better way to, to prove ourselves than, than doing it right now? So, um, you know, I think there's there's some pros and cons to it, but, um, you know, I'm happy to race with them, playing with them races. Um, have, you, have you had a chance to run with any of them guys, um, you know, when they, come, when they come down and have they run with you? Yeah, I mean, there was quite a few of them that, uh, you know, Kyle Bush ran, I'd say, I don't know, 12 or so last year, and uh, you know, we ran a full truck schedule, so we got to race against a lot of those guys throughout the course of the year. What? The next caller. Oh, is he on there? Is he on now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. You, get, you get rolling so fast, you don't even realize how much time's going on. All right, Mason, we're going to let you get out of here. I want you to thank your sponsors and, and the people in, that helped you. For 30 seconds. So. Let me... Um, let me get you out of here. Okay, absolutely, guys. You know, I definitely got to give a big thanks to uh, Collie One One before he dig. I'm the equipment they uh, were on board with us all last year, and uh, hopefully we're going to be able to uh, partner with them and and uh, some more uh, coming up to, to maybe run the full, full truck schedule next year. So thanks, thank you guys for having me on and uh, having me on again. Uh, love getting the, getting to talk to you guys. Mason, we'll get you on after the first of the year, and um, good luck, and Merry Christmas, and uh, have a Happy New Year. Absolutely, have a good holiday, guys. All right, you too, thanks. Should be there. Say hello, Ben. I'm here. You're there? All right, Ben Rhodes, k and You're the, the East champion this year, weren't you? That's right. That's right, and a Rookie of the Year? That's right. Hey, congratulations. I know one other guy that's done that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Ben, aren't you, are you from Louisville? I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. Yep, that's right. There you go, Al. There you go. Go ahead, Al. I'm going to let you start this one. I'm going to ask you the same question I just asked Mason. <laughs> are you a Louisville fan or a UK fan? I am a Louisville fan. I, All I, right. I'm, don't get me wrong. I pull, for, I, I pull for both. I wanted to stay here in Kentucky, but I shake more red than blue. Good. Okay. However, <laughs> if Kentucky was playing Duke, you'd pull for Kentucky, wouldn't you? That's right. Uh, see, that just, I just, I don't know what to think of you. That's Kentucky just awful. Pride, Kentucky pride. Well, Mason, Mason Mangles was just on, and he, he absolutely hates Louisville. He's a big Kentucky fan. <laughs> uh, he will, however, buy Papa John's pizza. But that's as far as he'll go toward the Cardinals. So anyway, y'all, I got y'all beat. I, I, I don't watch any of the, of the college sports. I really, I'm not really care about it. But I am an Iowa fan, through and through. What have the Hawkeyes ever done for anybody? Wrestling, basketball. They've been they've been to the Rose Bowl. Rose Bowl, big deal. Had been to the Super Bowl. <laughs> Anyway, talk to him about racing. <laughs> well, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, my, Rhodes, I, I'm my, answering no, a, a text here right now. No, my Kentucky and Louisville question was was, was set the table. Um, ben, we were just talking to, to Mason Mingus, and we were talking about the fact that hardly anybody can go into the next season with any with any testing, with any notes or anything based on what happens in this in the off season. Is it worrisome to not have any tests at all that you guys can go to? It is. It's, it's worrisome to me as a, as a rookie going into the Xfinity Series. I've, I've never driven the car, and the only time that I'm going to drive the car is on track with other people at the racetrack with, you know, the two hours practice that I have uh, before the race. So that, that is worrisome, but I know that my team is the best team out there, and I know that they're going to have the best equipment, we're going to have the best cars. And I'm going to the tracks for the first time in the, in the cars, um, that I've had success at Iowa Speedway. So, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not worried about too much because of the, the good people that I have behind me going to the track that I'm going to. 
But um, I can I, I I definitely wish I had the seat time before going out there with all those other people. Who are you um who are you teaming up with this year? Let, let's talk about this next year coming up. What are you going to be doing? Well, I'm running ten races in the Xfinity Series with Junior Motorsports. Um, so I'm running the 88 car part time, and that's still Junior's car. He's going to run that part time along with Kevin Harvick and Casey Kane. So I'm, I'm one of the I'm one of the four drivers. Oh, cool. Is, is that it, or do you got anything else? Well, as of right now, that's that's just all we have on the schedule. Um, we, we're, we're, we're just going to wait to see what else pans out, you know, as the season gets closer. Um, there's, you know, there's always a possibility of getting in races. There's a possibility of maybe some more nationwide races. It just depends. We just have to see what pans out, what sponsorship comes available. You're stepping into a pretty big car there, being in junior motorsports. I mean, Kevin Harvick and Tony Stewart and, of course, Junior. And there's been a host of people in that car. What's it like stepping into that? That's some pretty big shoes. It's, uh, it's an honor to be able to, you know, affiliate with such great people. Um, I just, I know that I have the best team and the best teachers in the sport. So I'm truly excited for the, uh, this opportunity to learn from them and to make myself better. Yeah. What was it like going at night? Now, first year in, in, in the K&N East Series, you won the Rookie of the Year, you won the championship. Tell us what that was like. Uh, this season has been a dream. Um, it's just been a dream come true because of the dream team that we've had. The, the guys that are on our crew that make up our crew, Mark McFarland, Kevin Bellancourt, Joe, uh, Martin, Ricky, Lloyd, but they, they just all work together so well. There's been very few mistakes that were made this year. And the ones that were made, you know, they, they were some of them were big mistakes, but we learned from it and we moved forward. And we were never looking back at any of that. We, we just kept looking forward to the next race. Did you say Mark McFarland? Yep. That's right. Hey, there's another one of those around yeah. just before, you know, with Greg and, and Danny and them. So. He's, uh, he is an amazing little man and an amazing creature. <laughs> did he teach you a little bit about being behind the wheel? He did. He, he did. We went to the tracks like Langley that he's been at before. And, you know, we went to Langley and we won. And I think a lot of that has to do with the success that he's had there in his career. Um, and, and we were able to work together so well at a place like that. Yeah. Ben, ben, when the offer came to drive for JR, did you sort of shake your head and think, I, I, don't, I didn't just hear what I think I heard, did I? Was it kind of hard to accept or hard to believe? Or, or did you sort of think for a moment, is this really happening already? Uh, or did it just sound, seem natural to you? Um, it's, it's a little bit of all three. Um, it's hard to believe. It's all very surreal to me still to this point that I'm driving for junior motorsports. These are the guys that I've looked up to my whole life, and I, I want to be in their position, you know. Um, and, and just to be able to affiliate with these guys and to uh, learn from them and work with them, that, that's huge for me. And it was, it's like you said, a dream come true. I, I never would have thought it, um, but at the same time, it feels like a natural place for me to be. Um, they're, they're all great people. It's a great team. And uh, I tell you, I'm so excited for this next season. Uh, but I'm, just, you, I'm just pumped. But do you remember precisely the moment where you were, what you were doing when when you got the offer? I mean, were you home? Were you at a racetrack? Were you on a cell phone? I mean, I'm just curious how it must have come into your life that this is the opportunity that may carry me for the rest of my life. Do you remember that moment exactly? It wasn't really one defining moment um, when I got the offer, but I remember when I first started getting uh, the phone calls from Junior Motorsports, or actually the very first, I wasn't even call a phone call, it was just more or less a message saying, hey, you know, that they have some interest, um, we're going to start building this relationship. And I was actually at the Oakville Motorplex at that time in, in Mooresville, North Carolina. I had a go-kart, I was, I was driving the tag cart around the track, and um, I came down and had some missed calls. And it was, you know, my uh, agents and, and PR people and, and team that were telling me, you know, we had some interest. So that was that was really cool for me. Okay. Is that how you came up? Is through the go karts? Uh, I came up through the go karts on, on dirt tracks and dirt oval. Um, I was actually driving the the two cycle tag road course cart at the time. Oh, really? Yeah, I was trying to broaden my horizons a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you've been out filming commercials, I heard, today. 
I have been. I've been, uh, I've been out shooting some commercials for Park Community Credit Union. They're a uh, local bank banking branch here in uh, local Kentucky, and they've been doing great. They've been growing. They're a great community, and uh, they get a lot of stuff out in the local community too, which is great. And uh, I'm excited to be part of their team. Do you? Um, uh, now I take it then that you still live up in the Louisville area. Any plans of uh, moving um, south? I do. I still live in the Louisville area. Um, I'm, I'm still going to school up here, actually. I graduated May 15th uh, from high school. So once I graduate from high school, then I'll look at moving down to North Carolina. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. He hasn't graduated high school yet. So you're a senior now? Yeah, I'm, I'm a senior right now. Okay. When you when you have to miss class to go to a race, I mean, whenever you run your first nationwide race with Jr., do you have to get a, a like a hall pass or something? <laughs> I mean, this is amazing to me that that you're still in high school and you could be racing among some of the best race car drivers in the world. Does anybody at school know that? Do they, do they appreciate what you've done? I think so. I, I, my, my school's actually rallied behind me quite a bit this past year. And the community, the Olympic community at my school is pretty strong. And uh, they're all behind me 100%. So uh, that hall pass, I, I've been getting those pretty frequently. Uh, <laughs> the day that the Hope Junior Motorsports deal was announced, I actually I sat in the office all day at my school. And I worked on Twitter and Facebook. And I did interviews all day. Um, so that was really cool that they worked with me so well. Um, that they really do rally behind us and just an incredible sense of community. So, so they back you pretty good up there. <laughs> well, they, uh, they, they enjoy what I'm doing and now enjoy being a part of, a part of Holy Cross. <laughs> which is, uh, like I said, it's been a great community. So 18-year-old so Ben Rhodes, where, where are you going to end up here in about five years? Well, five years, I, I don't know where, where we'll be at that time. I'd like to be in the Sprint Cup Series at that time. You know, competing for a championship in five years, but, um, you know, the, the, the race world is, is um, interesting, you know, you never know which way you're going to go. Uh, I've got to perform this year, this is just a negative break at point, so once I start performing, I, uh, at least I hope I do, uh, <laughs> we'll hopefully have a, a full ride next year, and, and then from that point, develop great relationships and, and move forward. Well, we're going to wish you the best of luck and, and let you get on out of here, and, um, let, let me ask you one more question. I got something for you. Al's got something no, for you. Okay, we ain't done with you Roger, yet. Roger, you go first. <laughs> hey, Ben. Now, you're the only person I know of in the k and series that has their own die-cast cars. That is right. No. Sugar cubes. Sugar cubes. Uh-uh. What? what? He's what? not the only one. Godovic's got his own. Ah. Uh, See? You were wrong. Well, hey, he's the only one I've heard of. Yeah, actually, uh, Brandon and Rick Godovic got theirs. But I, I'm going to ask him a question I bet he does okay. know the answer to. <laughs> no matter what you do in your career, no matter how many championships you win, no matter how many Daytona 500s or Brickyards you win, no matter how many cups you win, you will still never be more famous than the most famous athlete to come out of Louisville. Muhammad Ali? Absolutely. Yeah. But if you can be second to him, you'll have had a pretty good career. Well, maybe maybe one of these days I can be second to him. Or, hey, I'm, you, you just popped a new goal in my head. You know that, right? i got, I got to upgrade Muhammad Ali. <laughs> <laughs> you just popped a new goal in my head. <laughs> the, Louisville, the Louisville lift. If you, can, if you can be anywhere near as successful as he was, now, he's still with us, by the way. He's quite elderly, yep. but he's still around. He's, he's early 70s, yeah. late 60s, and, and Parkinson's is, yep. is, is really, but yeah, he's still with us. You can carry Louisville, you can, you can carry the city of Louisville to even to, to great heights, but probably not beyond Muhammad Ali. But anyway. But, but if he wins a, a, something to shoot for. Cup championship. I'm talking worldwide. Okay. Right around the world, I mean, they know who Muhammad Ali. They know who the yeah. Cassius Clay is. The yeah. Louisville Lip. Anyway, listen. Thanks for your time on a Wednesday night. Um, Absolutely. Thank you all for having me on. I'm gonna sit back to studying for exams tomorrow. Now what, now, what do you got? What, what subject? 
I've got uh, English and pre-calculus. Pre-calculus? Hell, I couldn't even do... Calculus with... Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, Ben, if I was there, I, I could help you out on the calculus, but... Hey, sorry English, about English ought to be easy. We all speak the language. It's not as easy as you think I, these I, days, I, but, I, but I know what you're saying. I, I agree. Oh, with by you. the way, Ben, I, if you ever hear of a guy named Al Pierce that comes up to do an interview with you, <laughs> that's who's been talking to it with you on here with us. Take off your sunglasses. <laughs> now, what will be, last question, seriously. What, what will be your first start with the, with the JR team? Uh, I will be starting with Junior Motorsports. On May 17th. That sounds like Charlotte. No, no, no. Uh, Iowa. May oh, 17th, Iowa. Iowa. I'm sorry. You said that earlier and I, I forgot. And that's a good track. That, that'll be a good track yeah. for you. Yeah. That'll be your first chance to interview him, Matt. I won't be at Iowa. Ah, that's a, that's I will have just finished the charity ride. Charity You're ride doing that again this year? Of course. Hey, you've done every single one, haven't All you? All 20 of them, yep. You and about, oh, there's only about five of you. You've done more than he's been alive. Seven of you? You've been doing more than he's been alive. Oh, of course. I've done more than a lot of people have been alive. <laughs> okay, Ben, thanks so much. All right, thank you guys for having me on again. All right, All right, right. Ben, Merry Christmas, and, and we'll get you on next year. <laughs> Happy holidays, guys. All right. All right, you too. Thanks, Ben. Thanks. Call Marty right. for like 30 seconds. All right. Call Marty. You right there. <laughs> we're going to break the news to him that he is not. Uh, give, me the number, give me the number. Give me the number. Eight nine seven two nine one seven. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Tell everybody. <laughs> if he'll answer, he's probably going to look at it and go. Hey, no, he said he said wrestling match. He might have answered. Marty, you there? I'm here. What's up? Marty, I got bad news for you, buddy. There has been an official recount and a re-canvas of the vote, just like just like in Florida. Actually, you were not the champion. And I'm Al Gore. <laughs> you, yeah, you are, you are Al Gore. <laughs> you you are not the champion. Although, only two of you picked Harvick to be the champion, but the other guy had two of the final four. You only had one of the final four. Did he have Harvick as the champion? Yeah. Say what? Yes, he did, but he also had Logano in the final four, and, and you did not, so. Well, I'm, I'm, I should have put something different in my lockbox. Yeah, but you did, but, <laughs> but you did have, you were the only guy to have the first four out correct. So if there had been a tiebreaker, if we had needed the tiebreaker, you would have gotten it, but we didn't need a tiebreaker, so you're SOL. Well, Roger can uh, buy me an appetizer instead of a full meal then. Hey, hey, Marty, just come over and be on the show one night with us and you'll get a full meal. All right, that's good. So, uh, so what's going on? Well, we, we actually, we're, we're over time, so we got to leave. we we got to go to dinner. Al, um, Al's tummy starts growling at 8.01. Yeah, it's, it's 8.03 and, and we've we're talked too long. But listen, <laughs> seriously, before the season starts next year, we're going to have you on again. To give us your idea about the chase, why you hate it. Um, <laughs> well, I you assume it. everybody hates no, it. He hates it. He's already told me he hates it. Do you really, Marty? No, no I, I do not. I do not like the way that they finish the season coming down to uh, Homestead is the be-all and end-all. I mean, they they have a lot of fun down there. Uh, we can talk about that uh, yeah, sometime after the new year. And before January 31st, I go on my cruise. So. Okay. All right, we'll do and, that. And we'll the do other that. thing is, the most recent guest on the program, I'm sorry, the next to last guest on the program was a guy named Mason Mingus, yep. who's a huge Kentucky fan. <laughs> oh, okay. So y'all are definitely coming up in class. Well, We're guy, working on it. No, because the guy just after him, who just hung up, a guy named Ben Rhodes, is a big Louisville fan. <laughs> Yeah, I knew, I knew that too. I think I interviewed Ben. When he was at Langley. Was he at the uh, K&M race or at the uh, Hampton Heat? Yeah, like K&M. Yeah, yeah I, I think we talked about that a little bit. And, and we're looking for a Duke fan other than me. All right. Well, look, when we run here, they're getting back to the wrestling. And okay. I'll, uh, I'll uh, look forward to being on the show and talking Chase here in a few weeks. Okay, maybe Friday I'll come to your part of town for lunch. All right. 
I'll be good. All right, bye. All right, later. <laughs> Next next week we're not going to be on. It's going to be Christmas Eve. We're it's Christmas Eve. Night. We're not going to be on next week. The week after that is New Year's. We're not doing that. We'll come on the sixth. Yeah, the following fifth or the sixth, whichever it is. We'll be back on. Have a happy New Year. A Merry Christmas. Happy Safe Han travels. Yep, right. Happy Hanukkah. Second day of Hanukkah today. Happy Hanukkah for all of you that did, that didn't know. I knew that. Did you know that? Yeah. I didn't know it was the second day. I second day of Hanukkah. Okay. Bye.